No matter what DAW you use, when you install plugins, you've probably seen the options to install VST, VST3, AU, AAX, RTAS even. But what in the world does all this mean? And does it even matter which one you go with? Let's take a look. VST, which we all probably talk about on the daily, stands for Virtual Studio Technology, and it was developed by Steinberg back in 1996 to work within Cubase. And it actually slowly started to become the gold standard that it is today because other companies started to incorporate that technology in their environments. But at the end of the day, it's really just software that integrates synths and effects to work within your digital audio workstation. Now, when we're talking about VST or VST2 or VST3, they're all really just consecutively improved versions of the same thing, but we're still seeing those different versions today because it takes a lot of time to implement for companies to implement, especially considering the changing, not just you know DAW versions, but also operating systems too. Practically speaking though, for most people, you wanna use VST3 if possible because it actually promises better CPU performance by reducing the amount of processing that's required when the plugin isn't actually doing anything, when it's not active. There are also other benefits too, like multiple MIDI ports or the ability to use various types of audio data as input, that type of thing. Another consideration for some people is that if you use a Mac with an Apple silicone chip, like an M1 or an M2, then your DAW might not support anything below VST3 without running it in Rosetta mode. However, you're not gonna be able to make full use of your CPU when you're in Rosetta mode. There's a lot of reports out there that basically expose how much worse the performance is when you're in Rosetta mode, so do be careful. On the other side of things, we've got AUs, and AU stands for audio unit, which was designed by Apple to work on Mac OS. And in fact, if you use Logic Pro, you have to use AU plugins. But the good news is that they're almost identical to VSTs with one very important caveat, and that is you cannot use AUs on Windows machines at all. But if you work on a Mac and you don't use Logic Pro, then you can actually use either AUs or VSTs. But this is an important consideration if you ever want to collaborate with somebody who like works on the same DAW, but on Windows, or if you're planning on migrating over to Windows later on down the road, then you never wanna use AUs because you kind of reduce the amount of flexibility that you have to open projects uh, seamlessly between your computers. And if there's hardly any difference between the two, you might as well keep your options open, right? And play it safe to maintain as much flexibility as possible. Also, if you're the type of producer who likes to use the MIDI output from one plugin as input to another plugin, like, I don't know, you're using an arpeggiator from one synth to control another synth, there's some competing information out there about how well and how widely that's been implemented within the AU format, so you Logic users will need to let me know if you've had any issues with this. Continuing down the list of options that you've probably seen is AAX, which stands for Avid Audio Extension, which runs exclusively on Pro Tools, so if you don't use Pro Tools, and you probably never will, then you don't really need to worry about installing this one. That being said though, if there's a chance that you might use Pro Tools in the future, if you're more of an engineer than you are a producer, then I would definitely recommend installing the AAX version so you don't have to go back and do it. It doesn't really take up that much space anyway. Now, if you guys are anything like me and you have lots of old plugins on your computer because you just like the way they do things to audio, but they don't actually get updated anymore. You've probably seen the option for RTAS, which stands for real-time audio suite, or if it's really old, you might've even seen TDM, which is time division multiplexing. That's a mouthful. RTAS is just the native architecture, which means that the processing relies on your internal CPU and your computer. And TDM is the DSP architecture, which means that it just uses external processing power through an interface, like an Apollo Twin. But anytime you're dealing with RTAS or TDM, it's just to do with the Pro Tools environment. But AAX eventually replaced those two because it kind of can do the job of both at the same time. It's a little bit more efficient. Whew. So many abbreviations. But I hope this was able to give you guys some clarity on some of the options that we have access to as music producers because I know that it can be kind of overwhelming if you've never seen any of those abbreviations before and you're just trying to install some cool plugins. But please tell me about your experiences with all this stuff, especially the AU versus VST thing. If you've noticed any type of difference in performance, for example, uh, in your DAW, or if you just got any advice for uh, your fellow producers. And until next time, happy music making, and we'll see you in the very next video. Take care.